You are important. You belong. You have a destiny and a future. World Impact Celebration Church Online is a spiritual family of believers from all over the world where you can discover your purpose and grow in the grace of Jesus Christ. You will hear teachings by Dr. Peter Youngren, Pastor Nathan Thurber, and others. You will participate in worship, prayer, and taking the Lord's communion every week. You will enjoy video testimonies and interviews from around the world. No matter where you live, your prayer request will be included in every service. This will truly be an international online church. Wherever you live, from Southeast Asia to Europe, North and South America, Africa, and Australia, this can be your spiritual home. All over the world, I meet people who ask me if there's a way that they can participate in the services from the Toronto Celebration Church. Well, we're offering something much more than just a streaming service. This is a full-fledged online church for you. The World Impact Celebration Church Online is a place where you can find a spiritual family, a place of belonging, and where you can grow in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Set your calendar for 10.30 a.m. New York time. That's 4.30 p.m. Central European time and 10.30 p.m. for most countries in Southeast Asia. Heaven will include people of every culture, nationality, and ethnicity, and this will be a foretaste of heaven. World Impact Celebration Church Online is a place where you belong, where you will be nurtured, and where you can find your destiny. of the Toronto Celebration Church is a story of God's love drawing people from different backgrounds, cultures, even religions to be empowered to live their maximum life and to serve the community and the world. When I came here, I couldn't walk. I couldn't stand. I had a walker. But when I came to TICC, I was totally and completely miraculously healed. TICC is a family for us, for me and my husband. Uh, one of the best things that I really like about TICC is definitely the youth ministry or the youth program. And I'm truly blessed here uh, by the simple message of God's unconditional love, grace and mercy. I found the church I've always dreamed of. A church is not about building. It is about people. People from every part of society, young and old people from Asia, Europe, the islands of the sea, Africa, and across the Americas, together creating a better society, because to personally know God's love is the key to the ultimate life, and in a constant pursuit to find ways to communicate the gospel of Jesus Christ to Toronto and Canada, we believe that the best is yet to come. 
We welcome you, Celebration Church, today. For those of you here in Canada, or at least Ontario, it is Spring Forward Sunday. Megan, we lost an hour of sleep we last did, night. How are you did. feeling? Oh, you know, refreshed. <laughs> Absolutely. It is spring, and uh, the sights and smells of spring are so exciting. Leo even said, Mommy, the birdies are chirping. They're happy. And I said, yes, Leo, and so is Mommy. Well, I encourage you just for a moment to set aside the chirping of the birds and to <laughs> tune in for the next uh, just a little bit over an hour. Also, I encourage you to get connected. Uh, maybe you have a prayer need. You could even share that in the chat room. But we have online hosts in Facebook and YouTube uh, in the chat rooms. And so say hi. Let people know that you are watching. Megan, what else is coming up today? We've got Pastor Peter, who's going to be sharing a message with us today. As always, a special time of communion and prayer over your prayer requests. And also, something so exciting is happening. We've got live, hot, right off the press ministry highlights that are happening right now. That's so beautiful. very exciting. And I also see Pastor Peter's book, The Faith That Works. If you're new with us, go to our website. You can see the information on the screen. We'd love to mail you this book uh, free of charge, hardcover book if you're new uh, to the Celebration Church. We're going to go into a time of worship right now. My encouragement is shut out the distractions. Uh, the Lord is, you know, God's always speaking. He's speaking to each of us. The, the scriptures tell us that uh, sometimes it's just a matter of sh shutting out the distractions. And I know it's different. We're not here in person, and hopefully soon we will be here, at least in Toronto. But, uh, you know, sometimes what's good of it? So when it comes to worship, it's different. We're not here in the room with our hands lifted with people near us. But at the same time, we can shut out the distractions for these few moments and just uh, allow God to speak in that still, small voice. So let's go to this time of worship right now.
Good choice of songs for Spring Forward Sunday to wake you up. I know you lost an hour of sleep, but I tell you what, something good is coming. Pastor Peter's on the other side of, we're going to go back into a, just another song of worship and then Pastor Peter's up. But first, a time of prayer. And every week we get a number of prayer, prayer requests. We're going to lift those up in just a moment. But I want to share a testimony, a testimony that just came across my desk yesterday from the Celebration Church. I think you can see the words on the screen. I'll read it. Last year, I had a business legal matter which proved to be more complex than I I anticipated. It dragged on and on. I reached out for prayer. Everything has now worked out in my favor. All the glory goes to God, my provider. I thank God his promises are sure. This strengthens and encourages me even more to look to Christ with expectancy in all things, no matter how the situation may appear. Know that what you are doing, and when this individual says you, that's you, Celebration Church, when you agree in the name of Jesus when we pray, what you are doing for the kingdom of God is producing good fruit. Thanks be to God. And so let's go into a time of prayer with expectation that God answers prayer. Father, we lift up the prayer needs of our church family. We start in Toronto, Father, where 
an individual needs healing in their brain. They had a brain hemorrhage and they have bl blood clots, but you are healer, Father. To that in for that individual who's been laid off work and, and needs provision, Father, we recognize you are our provider. For the individual who needs direction uh, and peace in their relationships, Lord, you're the Lord who directs our steps. And so, Father, we cast our cares on you, knowing that you care for us, knowing that you know our needs before we even ask, and yet you've told us to come boldly to your throne of grace. So we do that this morning, knowing you hear, you listen, and you respond in Jesus' mighty name. And we lift up all the prayer requests around the world, Father, for our church family and that family that's in India whose daughter has lost their hearing in the right ear. Father, we just thank you for restored healing. Father, we thank you that you are a God that restores. And so, Father, we just thank you for opening up that ear. ear. And, and for the prayer request in Burundi, for the paralysis in, in the right leg. Father, we thank you for strength coming into that leg, that that leg would be able to function normally, properly, the way that you intended it and created it and designed for it. Father, we lift up those in, in the USA and from all around the world who have been separated due to the COVID restrictions. Father, we pray for comfort. We pray for the comfort of those family members. Father, we thank you that you are a God of comfort, that you are a God of peace, that you are a God of joy. So Father, we thank you for that. We join our faith with our church family. And Father, we thank you that you hear and see all of our prayer requests. And Father, we thank you in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, we would love to hear from you. Send your praise report. Send your prayer requests. We would love to hear from you. One more song of worship. Pastor Peter's on the other side with today's message. I encourage you, shut out the distractions. Turn off your phone. Turn off the, you know, uh, shut the door and, and, and focus in now on what God has speaking to our hearts this morning. Let's go there right now. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. That makes us happy to think about how Jesus Christ died for us, was buried and rose again, and we are identified in him. I pray today that your heart will be touched and that burdens will be lifted in the name of Jesus. You can see my theme. I, last week I had a similar theme, a little different, but uh, scandal uh, at early dawn. Uh, you say, why are you using this word scandal? Well, there are many words we could use to describe the enormity 
of what Jesus Christ did for us when he went to the cross, when he rose again. And there are words like redemption. It's a beautiful word to be, to be bought free, to be redeemed justification, to be declared righteous. What a beautiful word that is. Reconciliation, restored to favor with God, which is uh, the word that's used to describe what, what happened to the world uh, through Jesus' death on the cross. But sometimes these words get cloaked in religion. They get cloaked in a churchianity. So I chose another word, the word scandal, because it's also there in, in Scripture. This is how some people viewed this uh, beautiful message of the gospel. They thought it was a scandal. As it says in, uh, and I quoted this last week, 1 Corinthians 1, uh, 23, uh, to the Greek, foolishness, to the Jews, a stumbling block. The word foolishness there is a morons, where we get moron, idiotic, uh, and, and when it says Greek there, let me in these days of political correctness explain that Paul wasn't talking about all Greek people, that there was something wrong with them. When it says the Greek, it means the, the philosophers like Aristotle and Socrates and Plato and others uh, who, and, and, and many, many others. The Greek were known for philosophy. So they said this idea of the gospel, that you somehow overturn the cause and effect, that people can uh, be, be, be bound up in sin, and somehow they don't have to pay for eternity for those sins, uh, but that somebody else paid, that, that's foolishness. They said, oh, we, we just away with that. And then some said the Jews, again, is not all the Jewish people, of course not, because most of the, well, all of the disciples, all of the apostles, uh, they were Jewish people. Uh, but, but it means the religious leaders. They said, this is a stumbling block. And that word actually is the word scandalon. Scandalon, uh, which uh, where we get the word scandal, and, and they said it's just you should have to pay for your own sin. You should have to, uh, you know, own up to what you did and pay for it. And the fact that that the message that Jesus Christ paid for our sin, it seems like it was a scandal to them. Well, we're going to take it a step further today. I want to read from Luke 24, verse one. It says, "On the first day of the week, at early dawn, at the crack of dawn." They came to the tomb and they found the stone rolled away. So now uh, I, I'm suggesting even in, in the resurrection, there are things that to the religious people, it seems scandalous. It seems outrageous. You know the whole gospel story, when you really think about it, when did it start? It started before time began. It says that Jesus Christ was slain from before the foundation of the world. And then, of course, God kept showing his mercy down through the centuries and the millennia. God never stopped forgiving sin. It was not something that started with Jesus, and Jesus forgave sins even before he went to the cross. And, 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 and so when we talk about the cross and the resurrection, we include the whole thing, how Jesus went to hell and proclaimed victory, took the keys of death and hell, and how he's coming back one day to restore his kingdom. And then, of course, this truth is still working in us through the Holy Spirit. And, and so it, it happened there early in the morning. I, I, you know, can you imagine if you had been there uh, on the resurrection morning, what would it have looked like? Imagine if you had a sensor-activated camera located right by the, where Jesus was buried and the stone was there in front of the cave that was his grave. What, what, what do you think it would have looked like? Do you think it would have looked like Jesus maybe coming out of the tomb? You see one hand first and then comes the other hand and, and out sticks the head. I don't think so. This was the, the light of the world. It rose again. I think it would have been just a, a beam of light uh, that would have come and just cut through that rock and then the resurrection body of Jesus Christ as he was there risen from the dead. You know what it says in, in Romans 1? It says, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the son of God with power by the resurrection from the dead. So Jesus was born, born, born of Mary. And, 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 and born of the, of the Holy Spirit, but it was of the seed of David. But when he rose again, he, he was declared to be the son of God with power. 
What, 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 what could be scandalous about this? Well, let me give you some thoughts. Jesus rose again as the eternal Christ or the eternal Jesus Christ to live in believers. This is what religion has a hard time to grasp. Oh, we could say that back there, a long time ago, 2,000 years ago, something amazing happened and, and Jesus rose again and conquered death. And, and, and okay, we accept that. It's not uh, the normal occurrence. But uh, see, the gospel is so much more than that. It's not just a one-time occurrence. He, he rose again to live in us to live in believers. And so it makes a distinction in this verse. He, he was born of the seed of David, but then he was declared to be the son of God with power. And so when you see Jesus in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you mostly see Jesus, the son of man. He's even called the son of man. Once in a while, one time Simon Peter says, oh, you are the son of the living God, Jesus. And Jesus says, yeah, yeah, I, but, but, but don't tell anybody. Keep it a secret. It was like a, you know, sometimes you could see that. But basically it was Jesus, the son of man. But when he rose again, this thing that had been a mystery, it was revealed, Christ in us. It says in 2 Corinthians 5, 16, we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we don't know him this any way anymore. And so, so the disciples, they had known Jesus and you know they could talk about his hair color and his eye color and his complexion and his height and how he looked. They knew all the physical attributes. But here Paul says, that's not how we talk about Jesus anymore. Now he is the living Christ. And, and you'll see this in the resurrection story. It, it, it says in, um, in, in John 21, 4, that Jesus stood on the shore Yet his disciples didn't know that it was Jesus. They saw Jesus standing there. He was uh, having a grill. And then he said, do you have any fish? And they said, no. And they said, well, uh, cast out your nets again. And they went out there and they got all this fish. And Simon Peter got so excited. He says, it's the Lord. He, he jumped into the water. You know, isn't it strange that they who had walked with Jesus didn't recognize him? They didn't recognize him. So there was something different about Jesus. It wasn't that they knew him by physical attributes. They knew it was the Lord when they saw the wonder. Then it says in uh, something similar in, in uh, verse, verse 12 that Jesus said, come and eat breakfast. Yet none of his disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Knowing it was the Lord. So this, they, they didn't ask him, who are you? Who, who is this? But is, they, they knew it's the Lord. So Jesus was now manifesting to them in a different way. I'm talking about the eternal Christ, Jesus Christ who manifests himself to us. Then it, it talks, talks about Mary Magdalene, John 20, verse 14. She saw Jesus standing there and didn't know it was Jesus. There was a gardener maybe raking the leaves, digging in the garden, weeding. And she looked and she said, do you know where they put my master? Where is he? So it's strange. Mary Magdalene would have known what Jesus looked up, but at that moment she didn't recognize him physically. And then Jesus said, Mary. And there was something in the way he said that she realized it's the Lord. He, he revealed. So see, this is what it says in John 14. The world will see me no more, but you will see me because I live, you will live also, and I will manifest myself. That's what happens today. By the Holy Spirit still, Jesus Christ manifests himself to people. See, see that, that Jesus we read about in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, of course, he's, he's still, he's alive. He rose again physically. That Jesus, you talk to him on the boat and you have a meal with him and you saw him nailed to the cross. But now Jesus Christ risen forever, declared to be the son of God. And yes, he is seated as the son of man, the man Christ Jesus at the, in heaven at the right hand of the father, but he still manifests himself to us. That, that can happen to you today. See, we must never reduce Christianity to just uh, four spiritual laws or a catechism or say this prayer after me and some kind of a formula. No, Christianity at its core is that this 
risen Jesus Christ, declared to be the Son of God with power, manifest himself to people. You know, I love apologetics. Apologetics is the study where you try to prove by reason and philosophy and by logic and by science the veracity of the Scripture. There's a part for that. But that alone can't do the job. That wasn't the, the, the way. I know it's been popular in the second century after Christ. For example, uh, uh, Justin Martyr, a, a famous church father, he engaged in this, and then that's good. Many are engaged in apologetics, trying to show evidences that our Christian faith is real and good, and I, I enjoy that myself. I, I have done a few debates in universities, and, and some apologetics knowledge came in handily, but I'm saying there's a limitation to that. What Jesus said is that you won't see me physically, but I will manifest myself to you. And, 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 and so th 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 this is, see, see, religion like to have milestones and landmarks and say it happened back then and we have a commemoration. We have uh, Christmas and Easter and Christ Ascension Day and Pentecost Day and we, we commemorate certain like Christian holidays, but, but it's something that happened way, way back then. But, but, but this Christ now is alive. It says, test yourself, 2 Corinthians 13. Test yourself if you're in the faith. So here's a, how, you, how, how do you know if you're in the faith? How do you know if you're in the faith? He says, examine yourself. Don't you recognize yourself that Jesus is in you? Alice, indeed, you fail the test. So that's the test. The test is not, you know, some history geography test. Do you know where Jesus was born? Multiple choice, Bethlehem, Nazareth, Jerusalem, or Jericho. And you cross Bethlehem and, 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 and what happened? It's not just mere knowledge like that. He says the test is not, do you know the Roman road? Do you know Romans 3.23 and Romans 6.23? No, the, the test is this. Don't you have the witness? It's a rhetorical question. Don't you know yourself, Paul says? Don't you know? Don't you have the witness? See, even if you, you know, maybe something went wrong in your life. Maybe you, you took a wrong step and you feel like you've failed God, you've failed yourself, you've failed people. But you know, if you'd pause there and just say, Jesus, there's a witness inside of you that you belong to God. Our spirit bears witness. And so, so, so even in your darkest moment, you will say, yeah, I, I, I'm a Jesus follower. I have Christ in me. Even though I failed, he hasn't failed. Now, let me give you more. Jesus rose as a prototype for all believers. Now, that word prototype is usually used about machinery. A car or maybe your telephone, you know, when, when, they, when they, Samsung or Apple or one of these telephone manufacturers, they, they make a new model, then, then they make one prototype and, and, and then they, they test that and check it out and see if it works and, and check for any malfunctions. And then once they are satisfied, then they release this new telephone or a new car or whatever it is, electric vehicle these days maybe. And then uh, others follow, other, other vehicles, other pieces of equipment, and follow that template. And, he, and the word Jesus is a prototype is, is for all believers. Well, that's not in, in Scripture, the word prototype. We have the word firstborn, which is not just being born in a certain chronological order, but he's the first of many. It, it, it says in, in Romans 8, 29, that he might be the firstborn among many. Colossians 1, 18, he is the firstborn from the dead. And so Jesus Christ, he took everything that hell could throw at him. He was tempted in all things. And he ultimately went into the boxing ring with Satan and with evil, and he won an everlasting victory. He is the forerunner. He is the firstborn. And forgive me if I use the word prototype. He, he is the template. And then by God's spirit, we follow in his footsteps because he lives, we will live also. See, this is the whole concept. That's what makes it so scandalous what happened early at dawn when Jesus rose from the dead because it's not just that, that it happened once. No, it sets the standard. It says, or if, if you don't believe me, listen to this, Romans 6 Verse 8, if we died with Christ, we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. 
Notice so far it's all talking about Jesus, but, but, but hold on. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, that's the word there, likewise you. In other words, we're not just talking about something 2,000 years ago that we commemorate and we celebrate the incarnation and the justification and the redemption. No, no, we're talking about likewise you today. And reckon yourself dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. Don't, don't walk around in sin consciousness. So many Christians sadly walk around so sin conscious. Here Paul says, don't do that. Reckon yourself dead to sin. Reckon that when Christ died, you died with him. And then reckon yourself alive with him. You have resurrection life. See, religion can't handle that. They can maybe handle that, yeah, there was somebody there who died and rose again a long time ago. But you're saying you have resurrection life in you? Well, how do you know? Do you deserve that? Are you worthy of that? No. I have received by his grace resurrection life. See, Jesus rose to model the natural supernatural life. I know it's contradictory. I put natural slash supernatural life. You say, how does that work? Well, I think Jesus really during the 40 days that after he, he, he rose again before he went to heaven, Jesus kind of is a, is a model for all believers. And, you know, I go back to that story I mentioned about uh, Mary seeing Jesus in the garden. But Jesus came across as a gardener. Jesus wasn't there with a priestly robe and the high priest breastplate on and ministerial collar and a big kind of a ministerial hat on his head. He, he was a gardener. Could have been a bricklayer. Could have been somebody at the shopping center. Could have been, could have been anyone. He was there. He just manifested himself through a gardener. Oh, I, I love that. And, and then, you know, uh, on the road to Emmaus, there's a story of these uh, disciples. They were so worried. They were so discouraged. Maybe you feel like that. They were saying, you know, we, we thought Jesus would be the new king, and now they killed him, and, and they're walking on the road, and they feel discouraged. And then this uh, unknown brother, you could say, appears with them, and he's talking with them, and he's an enthusiastic brother encouraging them and say, well, you know, don't be so worried about that Jesus died because this was all spoken in the Scriptures. And then they sit down and break bread, and suddenly they say, "Who? it's Jesus. So so unpresumptuous, so laid back. It, you, you see, Jesus manifested himself through that just, in, in a way, ordinary brother that walked along with those who were so concerned. Same, same there at the barbecue. Jesus was there. Can you see him? It was like he was flipping burgers or maybe fish burgers or hamburgers. I don't know what kind of burgers. There was more, more fish in those days. And he's there. See, see sometimes... We, we, we think that the supernatural, oh, it's supposed to be like, ooh, ooh, you know, don't come close to me. I'm, I'm so anointed. I, I'm a, I have a healing ministry. Some preachers talk like that, but not Jesus. There's such a natural flow and ease to Jesus. He's there just working the barbecue. And at the same time, he says, go catch some fish. He said, we haven't caught any. Well, throw out your nets again. And suddenly the nets are full. It's a wonder. You, you know, th th this, is a, this is a picture for us. You see, this is, this is how, how we are. Uh, Jesus said, you know, the, the works that I do, John 14, 12, the works that I do, uh, shall you do, and greater works, because I go to the Father. And so I want to alert you today. This, this sounds scandalous to some that you may not be a minister. You may not be a clergy person. You may not be, have your license. You may not have your doctorate of theology on the wall. If you do, I have one or a couple, I think. Uh, you can have them displayed, but I sure don't depend much on them. Uh, but you can just be an ordinary person who don't know very much. But Christ has come to manifest himself to you. Oh, that's what makes it so special. See, every religion elevates the clergy, the man of God, way up there. Ooh, the man of God. 
But Jesus says, I'm, I'm the prototype. I'm the firstborn. I come to live through every one of you and manifest myself. This is beautiful. Let, let's share the life of Jesus Christ. Let's, let's everybody, let's have millions of believers share the life of Christ, you know. And that, that's what we got. The whole story of, of Christ's death and resurrection. Sometimes we, we, we stop at the cross and we sing about the cross and we say we need to preach more about the cross. And I suppose we do, but I tell you, we sure need, need to talk more about the life. We have victory. Evil has been defeated. I, I got some more verses for you. Jesus rose to be the foundation for our faith and for new life. I mean, it starts with a very basic Romans 10, 9. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. See, that's where our faith starts. That's why we say that the kind of faith that you and I have today as believers in Jesus is even different from the faith that they had before Jesus came. We know he is risen. And it says here that you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. That is the very tipping point where, where salvation is activated in you. The new life is activated. First Peter 1, 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So the very... The very foundation, we call it about being born again. You've heard that phrase, I'm being born again. You must be born again. Well, it says here, begotten again, same term, that, that the way we are begotten again is through the resurrection. It's very important to recognize that. You know, Paul said, he said, if Christ died for us, if Christ died, if his blood was shed, but if he didn't rise again, we are still in our sin. We, we are still, our faith is empty. Everything we do is in vain. It's just a religious gymnastics that we're doing a bunch of religious activities. And so, you know, I don't minimize the cross of Jesus Christ. It's wonderful. But Paul says, you know, if, if that's all it was to it, if all that happened that his blood was shed and that he bore stripes in his body, we, we are miserable, he said. Our faith is empty. But he says what, what makes the difference is that he is risen. Not just that historically he rose, and that is a historical reality in time and space. He rose again. But now he manifests in people. The living Jesus shows himself today. And for example, in Acts 3.15, give you another verse. The prince of life, whom God raised from the dead, See, they keep mentioning this again and again. They always have that little thing between the commas, raised from the dead by the resurrection, because it's so important. The faith which comes to him, the one who rose from the dead, who's alive, has given this, in this case, it was a lame man, has given him perfect soundness. So, so the idea here, the scandalous part of the resurrection, the scandalous part to religion, I hope not to you, and... Uh, of what happened at the early dawn when Christ rose again is that it's not just a historical event, but this resurrection life is flowing to us. It's flowing to you, first of all, to you personally. Maybe you feel deadness. We've been talking about that, Pastor Nathan and I both. Maybe you feel deadness in some area of your life. Maybe a relationship, maybe spiritually, maybe in your emotions, there's a deadness. Well, you can receive the resurrection life of Christ for you personally and say, I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live and I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So that's one thing. Then you can share this resurrection life with others. You know, you impart it to others. That's why the Bible says, those who believe, they shall lay hands on the sick. I mean, how foolish is that without resurrection life? It's not just that you put your hand on somebody, but you're saying the resurrection life of Jesus is flowing through me. And somebody else doesn't know about that life. And, 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 and through me, it comes and touches others. Here's what it says in 1 Peter 1, 18. Whom having not seen you love, speaking of Jesus. Jesus, we, we not seen him, but we love him. That sounds strange to some people. Though you do not see him, 
yet you believe. So we, we, we don't see him physically. We don't see Jesus. But we love him and we believe on him. And you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. This is what some people can't see that because they haven't experienced it. Just, just theory, even as wonderful as apologetics is, are not enough. But he said there's something that happened when Jesus manifests to you that even though you don't see him physically, that then you love him. People say, I love the Lord. He said, what do you mean? People say, what do you mean you love the Lord? <laughs> You're a little bit cuckoo. You're a little bit, you flipped out a bit. What do you mean you love the Lord? Well, you say, he, he's been revealed to me by the Holy Spirit. Now, I've seen it in some places, and I, I have not seen a literal vision of Jesus, but it has happened in and around me. I, we had a Buddhist man who in our campaign, I think it was in, yeah, it was in Yangon, Myanmar, uh, who, who said, I saw Jesus. He came to me and healed, opened my ears. I often tell a story years ago of a woman in India, a Hindu woman, who I tried to pray for and nothing much happened. Didn't seem to be any improvement. She couldn't walk. And then she saw a vision of Jesus. I have a similar story about a young boy, eight, nine years old, who was brought to a meeting with his, by his father who belonged to the Sikh religion. I have a few stories like that. I've, people have told me they have seen some vision. I don't know whether it was an angel. Some of them think it was an angel. Some of them think it was the Lord, and even on the platform. And, and that's wonderful. I don't negate that. Some people may need that. But it, it, the, the general modus operandi is that by the Holy Spirit, Jesus is revealed to you and you say, I love him. I believe on him, even though I haven't seen him. Uh, you, you see, oh, this is more than religion. Uh, I, you, you know, he, he took your sin. He gives you life. He does it for free. That's why people call it a scandal. I got a couple of other nugget points here to pass on to you. I say in the view of everything that I've been sharing here, our religious activities intended to make us holy before God are a head fake. <laughs> you see that? Leave that up there for a moment. What, what I mean with that, I'm not saying that acts of, 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 of piety and acts of, of godliness, that they're not wonderful, but if we think that that is scoring points with God, then that's a head fake. We're playing with our mind. We, we do something good or we make a sacrifice of some sort and we think, uh, oh, God must really be accepting me now. Oh, this, I was kind to someone. I did a good deed. That's a head fake. Your, your head is playing games with you because everything rests on his death, his resurrection. He has put you in a position because of who he is, because he lives, we live. Not, not just live after you die, it's true. Well, if you die, you live again, but, but you live now, resurrection life. I said last week, and I'll repeat again, our love affair with religion is over. <laughs> you know, many people, we have a, a, a human propensity towards religion. And, and we have a love affair with it sometimes. We love to do things. You know, the Bible describes a lot about we love to do things. They love to be seen. They love to pray prayers. The Bible talks about one group, the Pharisees, which people in those days thought were very holy and godly people. We don't have such uh, good ideas about them today because we see them through the eyes of Jesus. But they wanted to be seen. They wanted to, they were kind of in love with the religious procedures and rituals where, where they got to play a part and show I'm, I'm kind of front row here. But once we see that it is 100% Jesus, that love affair with religion, it's over. And we receive that offered grace and forgiveness, resurrection life, because he died and rose again. So I, I want to bring that home to you in a moment. We're going to continue. There's a lot happening here in the service. But I want to give you an opportunity right now to receive this. Would you pray with me? Would you say, Lord Jesus, come and live in me. I change my thinking. 
I don't think that religion can save me or my own works. I receive this gift of new life. <laughs> Something is happening. The Holy Spirit is making Jesus Christ so real to you that you can, you, you might find yourself starting to rejoice with inexpressible joy. It's I can hardly contain it. I don't know how to show it. It's inexpressible. And uh, Thank God that your sins are forgiven. Here's something on the screen. It tells you about a little booklet uh, we can give to you. We can order it. All the information is there. Leave it for a few seconds on the screen there. And uh, for those of you who are new to the church, uh, for our online church as well, there's a book for you, a bigger book, but there's that, the Enlightenment booklet, The Global Quest for God. And it will answer so many, many questions. So go ahead and order that. And uh, I tell you, this is a great day. I'm going to pass over to Pastor Nathan in just a moment. He's going to take the Lord's table. He's going to challenge us to participate. And um, we could pray more for healing and all that because it just flows with this. But I'll save that for the sacred moment of the Lord's table of the communion. So over to Pastor Nathan right now. Well, that's right, Pastor Peter. We will in a moment's time when we partake in the Holy Communion, we'll believe God for as Pastor Peter preached today, resurrection life, healing, power of, God, of Christ Jesus manifest in your life. Whatever it is that you need, we believe for that to manifest through the life uh, of Christ. And as Pastor Peter said, that resurrection life, it's also meant to manifest in sharing to others. And I tell you, we have a remarkable opportunity every time that we receive and participate in the tithes and offerings we have a remarkable opportunity to manifest the provision and manifest that life of Christ uh, within us and I do say it is an opportunity and I want to share a scripture with you that blew, that's going to blow you away it blew me away when reading it let's go to it Matthew chapter 14 follow me you've heard it many times it's the feeding of the 5,000 but let's not gloss over it because this is going to blow you away. It says in verse 19, And ordering the crowds to sit down on the grass, he, Jesus, he took the five loaves and two fishes, he looked up toward heaven, he blessed the food, and breaking the loaves, he gave them to the disciples. He gave them to the disciples. I, and I made that big there. Just pause for a second. The verse isn't done, but look at what it says. He gave them to the disciples, and then it says, and the disciples gave them to the crowd. But notice that Jesus, yes, he obviously we understand he blessed the bread and he broke it, and I mean, it, we give him all the credit, but notice who it was who broke the bread and gave it to the, the people. It was the disciples. Jesus, he blessed it, but then he gave it to his disciples. In other words, the disciples were every much a part of this miracle as Jesus. Of course, Jesus is the originator of that miraculous grace and manifest power. Yeah, of course, we understand that. But we, understand, we see something here. And it's important to recognize in each of our lives. You see, we say, why didn't Jesus just do it all himself? I mean, he's the originator of the power. Why didn't Jesus just do it all himself? But we see something. Jesus works through us. He works through people. He works through you. He works through me. It's his power, but it flows through us. Of course, we don't deserve any of this grace, but he gives it to us. He's chosen to do that. Now, I ask a second question from this passage as well. What if the disciples didn't give it to the crowds? I mean, we take it for granted that they did because we read it in hindsight and hindsight's 2020. But what if the disciples didn't give what Jesus gave? Them? What if they didn't give it to the, to the crowd? Would there even been a miracle? I mean, if you put yourself in their position for a moment, not in hindsight, but in the moment, you know, they got a, a, a throng of people in front of them, and they're very hungry. And you know, you don't want to be between someone when they're hungry. They're grumpy. They're miserable. And so here the disciples, are, they're probably hungry themselves. Now, if they give what Jesus has given to them, to the people, maybe they'll go hungry. Right? These people, these people are ravenous. They got five loaves, two fishes, and ravenous people in front of them. I mean, if they give it away, in other words, there was a risk. A risk that they'd maybe go hungry, a risk that there wouldn't be enough. But you see, they trusted Jesus, and they took the five loaves, the two fish that Jesus gave to them, and they gave it to the people. 
See, that's beautiful. They took a risk and gave it. And in the giving, there was a multiplication. And remember, we go fast forward to the end of the story. Remember, there was more than enough left over, many basketfuls left over. In other words, there was enough left over for every disciple, his family, his distant relative, his long lost cousin. I mean, they could feed everybody because that's the way Jesus is. He, 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 there's always overflow, always more than enough. You see, in the same way, when it comes to our giving, we recognize everything that we have is from God. Even the money we gain at work, we were able to do it with the strength that God gave us in our bodies. So everything that we have is from God. Now, I recognize some of the provision is for our own needs. We have to live, Ab absolutely, and God's for that. But there's also a purpose to what he puts in our hands. There is a purpose. There is an eternal purpose, and it's a purpose for the kingdom of God. Jesus gave us that commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And Paul said that unless there are people who send through their giving, the great apostle Paul, he said, unless we send others, unless we, you know, in other words, fund the work of the gospel, it will not be preached, and that great commission will not be fulfilled. In other words, we're participators in that through our giving. But just like the disciples, we have a choice. We have a choice. He's put it in our hands, but now will we release it? Will we release it into the work of the kingdom? And I dare say, and we say this every Sunday, but you know, there's that promise that Paul said, when we sow generously, we reap generously. It's the same, it's the same thing. When, when we take what we have, yes, there's a risk. I'm sure the disciples thought, what if there's not enough left over for me and my family? But you see, they took that risk. In the same way, when we give, we take a risk. What if, what if I don't have enough? You know, this church family we've been talking about, I put resurrection favor behind me uh, uh, today because it's part of our Resurrection Sunday uh, initiative. But in general, in 2021, our church has decided we're going to give double our missions giving. We, start, we always do 10%. We're doubling it to 20%. And we've already started by faith doing that this month. And, and, and you know, that's a risk. What if we don't have enough left over? What if there's not enough for the budget? Well, you have that same risk. When each of us see what we have in our hands, remember those disciples, five loaves, two fishes, maybe there wouldn't be enough. Maybe they'd go hungry. But you see, they trusted Jesus, recognizing that he's, what he's put in their hands, he can multiply and have much left over. And they had so much left over, they could give even to their distant cousins. You see, that's what happens when we give. You see, we don't give just to twist God, to coerce God's, you know, to, to give us something. No, it's, it's a flow. It's a miraculous flow. We see that in the disciples. They, Jesus gave them the bread and the fishes, but they participated in that miracle. And in the same way, we participate in this great miracle of the Great Commission through funding the work of the kingdom. We do that here through the Celebration Church. And in a moment, Bangan ha has some amazing reports fresh off at my desk from this week alone, what's happening here at Celebration Church. It's amazing. Uh, so, so you're going to want to stay tuned for that. But in this moment, this is an opportunity to be a participator in that miraculous flow, what we have in our hands. We take it, put it into the work of the kingdom, trusting him that there will be much left over, just like the disciples had basketfuls left over. So this is our moment right now when we give our tithes and offerings. Can I encourage you? In a moment, I'm going to show you with a screen how you can give today. In fact, you see some of it at the bottom as, I, as I'm talking. But we need to hear from you. We have a great vision, a great mission. Our church has stepped it up in 2021, doubling our missions giving. But a lot's happening here in Toronto as well. Megan will share some of that uh, in a moment. But there's, there's a great need. There's a lot happening. The work of the kingdom is not stopped because of, the, of a pandemic. No, it's advancing. And that's you and I. We're advancing together. So let's be, let's be bold in our giving today. Take what's in our hands and, and, multi, and let's see it multiply in the hands of our master. You can see the information that's on the screen. First, for our Toronto family, how you can give today. We need to hear from you today. You can give by e-transfer. You can text your giving to the number on the screen. You can mail uh, uh, your gift in. If you're making a check, do it to TICC. You can see the mailing 
giving address, or you can phone. You can phone our office uh, and give your giving that way. You can even show up here at the door. Some of you do that as well during the week. Also, you can give online. You can see how you do that, ticc.ca slash give. We use a, a safe, secure system, Tithely. Uh, and so whatever way you choose to give today, thank you. Also, for our worldwide family, we do need to hear from you. We do a lot of work around the world, and your giving is of immense value. And you can, you can see how you can give today on peteryoungren.org or e-transfers. If you're outside of Toronto, how you can send e-transfers anywhere from within Canada, PayPal, uh, wires to U.S. dollars or euro. Just take a picture of the SWIFT codes and such that you can give. Let's go back to our Toronto screen right now as well. As I said, we do need to hear from you. We've taken a leap of faith as a church to double our missions giving in 2021. Uh, we've already started giving before we've heard from anybody. So, but, but, but no, we hear from people, each of you every Sunday. But we, we believe that God's miraculous flow will also benefit each one of our lives. Father, I thank you for every person who's gathered together online virtually today. I thank you that you've given everything to us in our hands. And I thank you that as we release it into your kingdom for the furtherance of the gospel, Father, I thank you that there is abundance overflowing in each of our lives. I thank you jobs, provision, overflow, wisdom, ideas, creativity in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said, Amen. Well, Megan, it's just to my right here on the set. I'm going to throw it immediately over to her to share some, some important things that are happening this week here in the ministry of Celebration Church. Megan, over to you. Thank you, Nathan. And thank you, church family, for your continued love, through your prayers, through your financial sort, uh, support. It's because of you that we've been able to keep reaching hurting people throughout the entire year, throughout the entire pandemic. So thank you so much. And, and in just a moment, we're going to take a look at a video from the youth department of uh, what's taken place this past week. And that's coming up. And a lot of times we show pictures of things that have happened, but this is what's exciting about today. These pictures are just in of ministry in action taking place right now. Take a look at a couple of these pictures. They're from Jacob. He's in Zanzibar right now. And uh, he, he's an associate minister. And Zanzibar, this is a unique thing about Zanzibar, it is 98% Islamic. And he's there setting up a gospel campaign. And Celebration Church, this is why our mission is so very important. You can see he's meeting pastors and politicians and religious leaders. And we are planning something that uh, has never happened in this big of magnitude before in Zanzibar. So this is truly historic. And this is what you are a part of, church family. And it's taking place right now. He's setting all of this up there. And take a look at this. This is happening in Kenya. Uh, Celebration Church, and you're in Kenya this week with Pastor Mark Juma teaching at one of our multiple Bible school campuses in Kenya. And this is all taking place despite the pandemic and you make that happen. And that is why in 2021 Celebration Church, we are doubling our missions giving. We're not stepping back, we're going forward bigger and better with greater things and reaching more people. And, and so that's exciting and you're a part of that. And now we're about to go to that ministry clip from the youth department that I was telling, about, telling you about. Once that's done, we're gonna come back and we'll take Holy Communion together. Go ahead and watch the video. Wherever you go, God goes. Wherever there's a need, God's already there. Wherever you speak, there is power there, and God wants to give that to you. That doesn't mean that when we pray right now, everything just changed, but now you have the one who is able to change everything. You have the one who is now living with you. And when you get the, to take out the time to get to know him, he's going to start changing things in your life. It's not the, the enemy and his tool of sin is very small compared to God. Very little, right? That's why I didn't want to spend too much time talking about it. But you should know that it's trying. It desires you, right? But now that you're a victor because you have Christ, it can't do anything. It can't touch you. Right? And just like Jesus, you get to Colossians actually says something very beautiful that Jesus came to make a spectacle of the enemy, humiliate him. And now because you believe in Christ, there are things that the enemy thought he had a, foot, a foothold. He thought he had you, but now it's like, hey buddy, you're gonna be humiliated because I know who I am now. I'm a child of God. I believe that God is healing you. Maybe he's already healed before I even said that. And that just goes to show the power of God. I'm believing that there is depression being removed right now. I'm believing that there are situations that God is giving you wisdom on how to deal with that right now. God cares. 
and he's here right now. And please, message us on Instagram, Facebook, and let us hear those testimonies. Because God is real and he cares about you. And you don't have to wait another night. You don't have to wait till we open to receive your healing. You can receive it right now in the name of Jesus. Well, thank you. That was Matt Wilson from our youth service just uh, last Friday night. I tell you what, our youth are in great hands. What a beautiful message. What an exhortation. And he mentioned healing, and, and we're believing that right now. That is, Pastor Peter said, the resurrection life, that includes your healing, your health, will manifest now as we partake in the Holy Communion. Let me also remind you that you should have in your mailbox last week uh, or the week before even uh, uh, a mailing. And in there, it talks about the Resurrection Sunday prayer request. Do make sure, a, a Resurrection Sunday is coming up April 4th. Make sure you fill out your prayer request and send it back into the office so we can include it here on Resurrection Sunday and believe God for uh, your life. Recognize this before we partake. God did not. God does not and God will not. He does not, will not, and has not give sickness to our bodies. He's not the author of sickness. Sickness did not exist in the world he created. Yeah, we kind of messed it up, but God sent Jesus. And Jesus came with a remedy. And by his stripes, we were and are healed today. And that's why we boldly declare resurrection life, resurrection healing, for your body by his stripes, the Holy Communion. The Holy Communion is what we call a point of contact. Yes, it's not the literal body of Christ Jesus. It's bread and it's a cup. And I encourage you in your, wherever you're watching to get your own piece of bread, get your own cup. But we apply it as a point of contact with that resurrection life of Christ Jesus. And we believe for it to manifest in our lives. And through the bread, there is healing. Through Jesus' broken body, there is healing. And so that's why Jesus said on the night that he was betrayed, he took the bread, he broke it, he blessed it, he gave thanks and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's do that together right now. Jesus, I thank you. And says in the same manner, he took the cup, blessed it, and said, this is the cup in, of my blood in the, that enacts this new covenant of grace. And we remember that today, and we participate in that covenant. It's a covenant of blessing. It's a covenant, covenant of favor. It's a covenant where we can be assured that that resurrection favor, the resurrection life of Christ is man, will manifest in our lives today. Not by our goodness, but by his grace. Let's partake right now. Would you just lift up your hands and join me in prayer? Father, I thank you for your presence, your life, your healing, resurrection power, being present with every person right now. We're separated virtually, but together in one spirit. And I thank you that it is your spirit, your Holy Spirit, the same spirit that raised your son Jesus from the dead. I thank you that it is your spirit that abides with each person right now. And Jesus, I thank you for a manifestation of your healing in every body. Let vertebrae be made whole. Let migraines go in the name of Jesus. Jesus, I thank you that as Matt declared earlier at the Friday night youth service, depression, doom and gloom, let that weightiness be removed now and the spirit of joy well up in every person. Jesus, I thank you that nothing is too large. We lift up your name, the name above cancer, the name above leukemia, the name above, above goiters, the name above every other ailment, Father, and by the, we receive healing by your stripes now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for individuals who are having a hard time walking, being made whole and empowered in the name of Jesus. We receive it now, and we thank you for that healing in Jesus' mighty name. I believe the healing power of Jesus is, res is manifesting in your life, just like Pastor Peter preached today. And we'd love to hear from you. Reach out, even say it, write your praise report in the chat room right now. They'll share it with me or email us. We'd love to share it with you. 
Right now we're going to uh, uh, some, something important from Elizabeth. She'll share that. And then on the other side, Megan will be back with a few things uh, uh, that are coming up as well. I'm going to go to Elizabeth right now. Parents, we have added another Kids World Zoom class for JKSK. Adding to our usual grade one to five Zoom meeting from 1.30 to 2 p.m. on Sunday and grade six to eight Zoom meeting from 12.30 to 1 p.m. Now, JKSK have their own live Zoom class with their regular teacher from 10 a.m. to 10.20 a.m. To join the live Kids World class, contact the office at 416-497-2508, extension zero, or email our children's pastor, Maria Ching, at mariac at ticc.ca. Church family, have you heard of Global Gospel Institute by Pastor Peter Youngren? Well, Global Gospel Institute is an entirely online Bible school to help you grow in faith and the work of the ministry. This is an online training institute by Pastor Peter Youngren, and we invite you. Go to www.globalgospelinstitute.org for more information today. Do you know someone who does not have access to Sunday online services? Would you let them know that Celebration Church now offers phone-in services Sunday at 10.30 a.m.? They will listen to the same service that takes place at 10.30 a.m. Simply call plus one six four seven three seven four four six eight five and enter the ID eight four three three zero two four one three five eight. You can call the office if you want more details and all are welcome. Well, Celebration Church family, it's been a great day coming to you in your homes or wherever you're watching and celebrating with you on this Spring Forward Sunday. As you go about your week, take a moment and just take a look at everything that's around you and the beauty that God has created and He has something good for you this week. And uh, right now we're going to close off our service. However, we want to remind you that there are Encounter Zoom rooms. There is a team of people there that you can connect with. All that information is on the screen there. They've uh, the, just something good for you there to be able to connect with people of time of prayer and fellowship. But thank you so much for tuning in and, and being a part of our Celebration Church family. We look forward to connect with you next Sunday, but also make sure to stay connected throughout the week. God bless and take care.